Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends. Woohoo! This is exciting. This is not only happy hour, this is happy life, happy shoes, gorgeous legs. Look at the gorgeous legs of my guest today, dear friends. Not only she has incredible legs, beautiful calf, gorgeous, beautiful heels. She knows how to walk on them. She is artistic. She is passionate. She's one of the best writer you've ever known. Magazine, obviously books, short stories, comic books. She's done it all. She runs magazines, but she writes books. Like the Alchemy of Senses with me, I cannot forget one of the most amazing time we've had together and we'll tell you all about it. She is a true San Franciscan, bicultural, you know, a mother Mexican, a father American, or vice versa. And she is one of the coolest lady you would know. She's a great inspiration. She's a single mother raising one of the coolest child there is on the planet. And I think for all of us as individuals, she's a true inspiration. In a business career, professionally, personally, and she is our social light in San Francisco. And more importantly, our brain. Dear friends, you've recognized her on TV. She's been there many times. I'm delighted to welcome the beautiful, the charming, the sensual, the so well-dressed, coming out of the egg because she knows how to reborn at all time. Teresa Rodriguez, yes! There she is, ooh! Bonjour. Good to see you. Good to see you, as always. Oh, Tell I us about it. this beautiful dress. Ooh la la, oh coming out of the cocoon with such a dress. You know, I when it comes to seeing Jean Charles, I have to plan my wardrobe. So I went through all of my dresses and there wasn't anything that was up to standard. So I had to go shopping and I found this and it Oof. just screamed Jean Charles Boisset. It screams talent, beauty, charisma. So Teresa, first and foremost, happy holidays. Happy holidays. To quite a unique 2020 and Oof. you will tell us a lot about it. But maybe we should start as we look at each other in the eye. If we don't, what does that mean? Oh, seven years of... Are you listening? Seven years of no S-E-X. <gasps> Ooh la 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 la. We don't want that to happen, so let's do it again. So Teresa, insane talent. As I just said, and I want everyone to understand the scope, but what was your dream as a child and how did you fulfill that dream? Let's go right in. Let's go in. So when I was... In fifth grade, I knew I wanted to be a writer. And so I would make little books and staple them together and give them to my friends. And my whole life, that's all I ever wanted to do. But, a little tricky, I'm dyslexic. You were actually one of the first people to recognize that really quickly. And so I went to university in Australia. I did my undergrad in Australia. I modeled there and I worked on a game show. See, model, game show, model, we're certainly not surprised. Game show. What kind of game show? It was a dating game show. Ooh. So I wasn't the um, the hostess, but I was a producer. So you were I the would, mostess. I would, <laughs> I, would, I would go on the trips with them. And so that's where I really learned my love of travel. So every week we would go on a trip. I would take the winning contestants. Um, I was living in Australia, so it was the Great Barrier Reef yes. or the Barossa Valley in South Australia, wonderful little islands up in the Whit Sundays, and I loved it, loved it, loved it. So I came back to the United States and I was in a career of advertising for quite a while, yes. but that longing to write just still was pulling at me. So I ended up going to Lima, Peru. Oh. On the flight home, we lost an engine in our plane mm. flying over the Andes. Maybe that's a fortune. Right? You land somewhere. I, you land somewhere, hopefully not in heaven. <laughs> So I um, made a deal with the universe in the plane. The, the cockpit was filling with smoke. The smoke detectors were going off. And I said, you know what? If I land, I'm going to do this. I'm going to write my first book, which is going to be for solo women travelers because I had traveled the world so much by myself. And I'm going to start a website for women and I'm going to make this happen. 
And sure enough, the plan plane landed after a very rocky ride, and I started a website for single women or solo traveling women called Tango Diva. I got my first book deal with Penguin um, wow. after that, and my first book, Fly Solo, The 50 Best Places on Earth for a Girl to Travel Was alone. a huge seller. Yes, it's in four languages now. I just One of my girlfriends just came back from China and brought me the, a copy in Chinese. This is fantastic. So yeah, so then my... So out of a unique experience, that unique experience yes. triggered in you, inside of that gorgeous body, the determination to go for it. Yes, and I think that really is one of the key yeah. keys, especially now with what we're going through in 2020, is how are you going to decipher your life, right? That's are right. you going to take the path of, oh, always well, me, or are you going to say, I'm going to really learn from these experiences and I'm going to go forth and prosper? So really with me, I really, I'm always trying to look for the go forth and prosper. Right? And that's amazing. So not only writing, but writing about a great topics, solo as a lady, which mm -hmm. is always you know, could be daunting and, and could be scary sometimes, right. specifically in some unique nations around well, the world. Well, and that was really what the purpose of the book, first book was, was to understand how to travel solo as a woman. There are places you shouldn't go, and safety was number one. So yeah. I really cover safety in the book. So my second book, Body, Mind, and Solo, was really about the inspirational side of travel for women. It's like, how do you do this, right? And I ended up doing a TEDx talk, which yes. was um, in Wilmington, in Biden's hometown. And um, the TEDx talk has over 1.3 million views and has inspired many, many people to Travel, so, so Teresa Rodriguez on TED. Everybody should see it. I have. It's amazing. Thank you. But it's great. So travel and why? Do you think that's because of your bicultural background as Mexican American that you know being in different cultures is something that attracts you, or is it? Yes. You know. Yeah, I think because I straddled two cultures mm -hmm. my whole life. You know, mm -hmm. my dad's Mexican and my family lived in Mexico forever. We still have family there and property in Mexico. And then there was the United States. So I always danced between the two of them. But there was also just this wanderlust. Um, I remember going to the library and getting an atlas and looking at all of the photos and where is this place and wanting to, you know, the dreams of what was happening there as well. And what were your favorite dreams? If you had to describe us two or three unbelievable travel experience you would want to share. Oh my that goodness. are in your books or maybe not yet in your books. So my first, first one that I always talk about is I was in uh, Thailand at the Banyan Tree Hotel and I had a private villa by myself and I was swimming naked in a little pool Ooh. that was in my yard, in my backyard. Did we hear that? Yes. Ooh la la. And I had a glass you of You know, I have a heated swimming pool at home, so. Yes, well, we might have to recreate this. Ooh la la. I'm gonna drink to that. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt, but that sounds very fun. Mm -hmm. So on one side of the pool, I had a glass of champagne, and on the other, I had a mango. So I would swim and take a bite of mango and swim back and take a sip of champagne. So that is one of them. I um, rode a, an Arabian stallion to the pyramids oh, yeah. in Giza, which is pretty amazing the as best, well. The best, isn't it? It's phenomenal. So I really love those things that... Intensity. And, yes, and inspire all and your senses. And brings an effort and brings culture at the same time. Yes, yes. Swimming, mango and champagne, yes. so you do an effort. Yes. I mean, riding an Arabian in Ginza, I actually have done it. And the next day I did a camel. <laughs> and they both pull intense. They are intense. Yes. But the Arabian is a little bit more intense. You have Love to it. say, right? Oh. And I don't even think that they can ever be controlled. They let themselves be in control. Right. But if they wanted, they would be so wild like you. Maybe. Right. Exactly, right? And then the third wildest experience you think you've done? I would have to say that I met the king of Sweden and his best friend, Bashan, took me and some ambassadors from Sweden on a boat ride through the archipelagos. Ooh. And I would have to say that was pretty amazing because we landed and they laid out a picnic with absolute vodka, which is, you know, truly Swedish. And all of the herring and caviar and nobody spoke that much English. So it was, it was, that was pretty phenomenal. Well, I would say there's another experience you should share with us. That was amazing. You were there, I think, two years ago in Venice. I was. For one of the most amazing experiences of your life. That apparently. was pretty amazing. So I took nine friends 
for my birthday to Venice and we rented a palazzo on the Grand Canal and we attended one of the most incredible balls on the planet, Ball, uh, Ball de Doge, which is in a private uh, palace. And we took a gondola and we were all dressed in 14th century costumes. And it was pretty spectacular, a once in a lifetime moment. I saw Teresa after that event and she was transformed, enlightened, and no pun intended to Venice, she was a Renaissance woman again. It was fantastic. I think I was a Renaissance woman in a past life. And sure. always, yes. do you believe in past lives? I totally believe in past lives. Yes. I mean, I think everybody, you know, you go to a place and you really resonate. You know, there's something in your soul that says, wow, I've never been here before, but I feel like I have. Like, I think that we're kindred spirits. Absolutely. I think that we have shared multiple lifetimes together in different in different ways. Fully convinced of that. And we, we're going to go through them shortly. We will. But, um, Teresa, uh, 2020 has not been as easy for you, specifically. And we're going to go back to travel yes. and writing and TV and magazines because it's so exciting the way you live your life. 2020, I remember reading a little email from you which was not tragic, but a big awakening for us. Tell us about it. Yeah, so I caught COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I was one, and of, one the, of the first. One of the first, you know, what I say, front row or no go, right? You gotta be yes. a trendsetter. So I caught COVID, don't know exactly where I got it. Yeah. Um, and it was three weeks of hell. Yeah. There was one five day period that I really did think that I was going to die. Really? I, you know, one of the things is when I caught it, there was no ther therapeutics. You couldn't actually get tested properly yet. So I actually really had to fight to get tested to find out that I did have COVID. Um, yeah. So, and you just you didn't feel it? well and oh you were not gosh. sure it was COVID. Well, the first thing that happened is I lost my sense of smell. Yeah. And I have a really acute sense of smell. And I was cooking dinner and I couldn't smell it. And I was like, wow, that's weird. And the next day I was on a Zoom chat with my friends and I said, you guys, look at this. I can eat an, an onion. I can't smell the onion. I bit the onion on camera. And they're like, oh my God, this is not right. So the first week I was okay. Yes. I kind of just, I didn't feel well. Um, I never had a fever, ever. Um, I never got cloggy sinuses or anything like that. But then on day seven, I started to go downhill really quickly. My lungs just started to close up and it was like breathing in a sauna with shards of glass in my lungs Oof. and very tired. It really affected my, I think one of the things with COVID, it affects people differently. And that's why it's such a hard novel virus to understand. Mm -hmm. Some people that have, you know, diabetes, they lose blood, they get, you know, amp parts of them, their bodies amputated. People with heart conditions end up having, you know, heart attacks strokes so with me it really and some people just go through it and some people quickly. just go through it in 48 hours and done i've had you know. i've had friends who just went through For it sure. one of them had like covid toe another one had a little cough i've and you know one ended up in icu for three weeks so for me, I was lucky. I never ended up in the hospital. I was in bed for three weeks. So. Um, and what are the big takeaway from it? Because mm -hmm. Teresa, dear friends, is so positive always that she turns a difficult situation into a great one. And I would not want to use the word opportunity because it's not necessarily the outcome here, but into a new way of thinking, maybe. It was, you know, Jean Charles, the first thing that I did, and I'm going to look into the camera, is I asked for help. And I think that was such a humbling experience to actually reach out to people mm. and say, I need help. Well my mother was, my daughter was with me, so I'm a single mother. So I had to keep her fed. We were quarantined. We we're not allowed to leave the house. And I had friends show up delivering food, yeah. bringing groceries, juices, vegetables, liquids. They would just deliver them to my door. Some sending you bubbles. Maybe it was not the right thing to <laughs> do. sent me lots of wonderful bubbles that were enjoyed after post -COVID. One of the most fabulous pictures I've seen of Teresa is her recovering present progressive. So it was not fully yes. yet recovered, but she was surrounded with bubbles and she said soon to be opened. Yes, soon and to be opened. Then I knew you were cured. Soon to be opened. So yeah, so I reached out for help. Yeah. I, and rest, that's the number one, is listen to your body. Listen to the way your body feels, and if your yes. body says slow down, stop, slow down and stop. And I think those were, for me, those were the two biggest takeaways. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you for sharing. And Well, let's have another toast yes. before you, we taste 
the alchemy of dreams because life is about dreams. It is about dreams. So, how would you advise for people to convert their dreams into reality? Because you had that event on the plane mm -hmm. and then you made it happen. What's your recommendation for all our friends with us today to really do what you've done? Because you know, it's, it's phenomenal, but it's not easy to do. It's not easy to do, but it's doable. My first, for the first thing I say to people is figure out what you truly, truly want. You cannot hit the target unless you know what the target is. Yeah. So a lot of people say, well, I want to be famous. I want to be an author. I want Whoa. to, but what does that actually look like? Yes. And so write it down. What does it actually look like? I want to be a best-selling author of a travel guide. I want to work with Jean-Charles Boisset and write his book. Whatever it might be, write it down. And then you've got your focus. After that, decide how you're going to spend your time. You cannot spend your time on social media and fooling around if your goal is to hit a target. So minimize the amount of time online. A lot of people say reach out to your friends and ask them for help. That is one way of doing it, but one of the other things I recommend is go online and find out who else did what you want to do yes. and replicate their success. I listen to authors all the time. Simon Rushdie, I'm listening to him right now, and the eloquence in his voice and the way he speaks. I just love his words. And so replicate those who you want to be like. And then also set little goals. You can't eat an elephant one bite at, you know, the whole thing. So just one bite at a time. Yes. Just little bites of that elephant, whatever that might be. And every day, set a goal to do something towards that mm -hmm. which you dream. That's right. Yeah, no, those are great advice. And I would agree with that in business. I would yes. agree with that in life in general. Those are So when you did the, the travel book solo, what a brilliant idea. Why for solo woman? I did not ask you exactly this question, but that's a good one. Yes, yeah, so at the time, 92% of travel was being decided by women. Okay. And there was two different types of women travelers, ones that were going with their their friends and their family, and then there was the ones that were going by themselves because one, they, they didn't have anybody to go with or that everybody else's schedule around them was so busy. And I found that that was such a huge market and obviously Penguin agreed that it was such a huge yeah, market. Yeah, for sure. And what we learned is that women have different ways that they like to travel and I wanted to explore those. Mm -hmm. So we did and I did. There was different types of travel, you know, cultural travel, activity travel, traveling to a place that has great weather, and then social travel, going to places that are really social. So that's how I broke down the book. And so in the beginning of the book, there's a little like Cosmo quiz where you take and you decide, and it gives each of those a rating for you. And then it, it tells you, okay, Jean-Charles, you want high culture, you don't want to do any activity, the weather's not important to you, but you want to be social. What places would meet those expectations that Ooh, you have? Very cool. Because we all have expectations sure. when we travel, right? Yeah. But we have to, once again, focus on what those expectations are just yeah. booking a trip to Cabo is not gonna solve what your expectations are because maybe when you get there there's nothing there that you actually wanted very good advice and what did you what did you learn the most from your writing career before we dive into a few books that you've actually written recently yes the biggest thing that I learned from my writing career is that there's always different ways to write mm -hmm. you can take one sentence and yes. rewrite that one sentence a hundred different ways and it will mean a hundred different things and so each word counts um, I'm not big on a bunch of adjectives if we can just get to the kernel of what the essence is of what you want to explain that's the magic and and on that note you write and run magazines many and one specifically right now i'm going to let you tell us about yes you write books coffee table books traveling books so what is the difference between those art forms oh they're completely different so i am the editor-in-chief of oat living magazine uh, for northern california and that really, the goal of that magazine is just to make people feel wonderful. I want them to open the magazine up on any page and just want to fall into it. I want them to just, the delicious words and the incredible pictures, and I want to take them away to someplace sensual. So that's really the goal of the magazine. Yeah. With the, each book that I write, I have 
a different a different goal. Um, you know, with this book that I just finished, yes. I want to talk about this book, which Let's I'm look so at it. excited Woo! about. But maybe before we open, you need to tell us oh. about what you feel about this wine. Oh my goodness. Because now your sense of smell is fully back. It almost, but I can She's wearing smell. a fabulous fragrance that I would love for you to smell too, but I will describe it later. Mm. Fabulous. Mm. What do you think of this wine? It's fantastic. It's the champagne that gala that yes. you've always loved. And I've always loved this one. I love how crisp it is. It gets to the point. It's like my writing. You, we want to get to the point, right? To yeah. really get to the place to celebrate. And this is what this wine does. So there's not, there's no excess in that, which I love that. Mm -hmm. And it's a 2010 mm -hmm. this time. So 10 years old Ooh. vintage, dear friends. Platinum color because Teresa has already the gold and the black one and the pink rose gold. So you gotta have to try the platinum. It's so good. Thank you for great opening. lingering finish too. Yes, and thank you for opening this for me. Oh, my, uh, my always. Salivating, my glands are all salivating. I know. Mm. We just need the caviar and life is good. Right. Maybe after the show. After. So you've uh, written an amazing book with one of the most incredible. Yeah, celebrated designers in yes. San Francisco. Lily Sammy had a. 50 year career yes. in San Francisco, which is. I'm going to open it for yes, you as you please. talk about it. Which is such a phenomenal career in the fashion industry. Yeah. And she has such an amazing story that it took me a while, I have to say, to get it out of her. She was born and raised in Iran of Persian nobility. And she really wanted to focus on just writing, just focus about her fashion. And I said, you know what, Lily, people want to know who you are. Yeah. And I think that this is when we wrote your book, we really wanted to get the sense of Jean-Charles Boisset. That's right. Right. And I think that's what I'm the best at is finding the essence of a person. And with Lily, her essence is just so pure, profound. She's so creative and her story is fantastic. So what we were able to do is I'm, was able to dive into her story. Um, it's and the photos are just fantastic. And an amazing journey from her coming oh, to the United States as amazing. well, right? Amazing. So she, you know, she came here as most um, well-to-do Iranian families do on a just a world trip. They give their yeah. children a trip to take around the world to come back to Iran. But she ended up in um, San Francisco and ran into a man in Berkeley who said, oh my God, I am roommates with the, the, the guy who's got a picture of you on his bedside table. <laughs> that was her first love of her life. Ooh, always remember your first love. It could change your life. It could. And so they ended up, oh, this was her, this is just so, I have to find out. Oh, look at that. I just love yes. this is. All just about Iran. So beautiful. Amazing. So she ended up reconnecting with the love of her life in Berkeley, California, on her one way ticket around the world. And her life has just been an, a glorious set of serendipitous moments. And what we've done is we captured as many as we could in this book from her, her you know, from her birth to her, That's her, amazing. her, the end of her career as a, a designer. So you wrote the book with her in collaboration. Yes. And integrated obviously all her phenomenal haute couture dresses. Oh yes, it's just so fantastic. I mean, oh, And I, I, I would it. imagine that people these days cannot go out as much as they'd like. Right. So they must be very excited about such a book oh. to dream and escape and it, escape and i that I, I we really wanted to to capture that sense of escape the beauty and the that the majesty of what it was like yeah. to have a gown actually made for your body which is such a privilege and especially having lily do it herself so that's the book and we're super excited about it she's already sold out on the first run of the the book so if you want to get a book you'll have to uh you can go to lilysammysf.com and um the second round and we will done. carry the book in our tasting lounges at jcb in yonville and of course raymond vineyard because it fits very well and whatever teresa does we want to do with you so thank you i want to share an amazing story as i serve you a little bit of pinot noir because right. i know your love of pinot yes they could be from oregon because yes. they leave a lot of taste <laughs> and persistence to your mouth all the way 
to the, you know, I know all the love stories of Teresa. S sadly, not all, but many of them. So this is the alchemy of dreams, <gasps> Pinot Noir. And you know this name. painting from the house. I do. Yes. yes. So we were so excited it made about- such a great label. Well, as you said, dreams made them happen. And as I was sketching, not painting because I don't have this talent. It's Stanislas Kostas who did it. But I sketched them on a piece of paper. My dream was eventually on the label as a series of wines. So, dear friends, this is called The Alchemy of Dreams. And I wanted those wines to be in the presence of Teresa because she really represents the dream. The dream in life. And the dream of a very successful woman who remains phenomenal extremely humble all the time and extremely phenomenal Thank you. but before we go to this book how is your daughter she is fantastic so um, Jean Charles and Gina have two beautiful daughters who are only 48 hours apart from my daughter so they're same exact age we're very fortunate she goes to a pri little private school in Pacific Heights called Hillwood Academic Day School and yes. they they were able to to open and she's so brilliant. Explain everyone how fabulous she was at the Louboutin event oh we did goodness. in the city. Yes. And she was coloring and designing shoes. She was. And she was seven years old. She was. And then she brought her little, her little faux Hermes bag. And she said, Mommy, pick out any pair of shoes you want. I will buy them for you. <laughs> and she had a dollar and 62 cents in her, her purse. <laughs> <laughs> to her great values. She almost knew the price of a Louboutin. Oh this is at least for the outer box. Exactly. <laughs> but she's adorable and I will never forget she was drawing little shoes yes. as we were presenting wine and shoes together on Maiden Lane in San Francisco. That was a great evening. Yes, that was fantastic. So but not as fantastic as the... What do you think okay. of that? Tell Ooh. us. Mm. It's like a, the smell of a long lost lover. Ooh. Ooh. I hope his name is not Dylan. No. Because we put him in a doghouse this yes, time. Yes, we, we did. I He's heard. been punished. Dylan, <laughs> opportunity knocks, my friend. You must answer the door. <laughs> so, Pinot Noir is something you love. Mm -hmm. And every time we've had fabulous dinners and lunches mm -hmm. or just drinks, you love Pinot. What makes you love Pinot Noir so much? I love Pinot because it's the light, the light essence of a deep red wine. Yes. So it showcases the best of. Mm -hmm. Where I think sometimes a cab can come on a little bit too too strong for me. Mm -hmm. What a Pinot does, it walks by like a really well dressed man with mm -hmm. that perfect clone. That's uh -huh. what Pinot is to me. Mm. Good description. To the well dressed man. <laughs> and to the fabulous Teresa, who recovered now all her senses. I did. And I'm so thrilled of this. So, dear friends, I met Teresa many years ago, and she so kindly wrote an article, and you should talk about that, and then I'll tell our friends how our friendship got further developed and how we started our collaboration. Yes. That great article you did mm -hmm. on, on me one time, which I thought was so on, for which magazine? That was Soma magazine. Yes, yeah. that was quite a while ago. So Teresa does this article and I think this woman has an amazing writing style. And Patrick Egan and I are thinking, we got to write a book which is all about the alchemy of senses. It's all about the emotion of the senses. It's all about taking people on a journey through a series of acts. And we go through tons and tons of great writers. And many we know. And I'm thinking suddenly, what about this fabulous lady who is very cool, who is a great listener, and an incredible writer, and can make it happen? So we reached for Teresa, and very fortunately, she became very quickly available to come and visit, and we started the collaboration. So do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yes, I remember getting the call. You, got, you were in Naples at the wine festival there. I get a call from you guys and I could hear the beach in the background. And I said, yeah, let's do this. But I knew you well enough to know that a normal book would never suffice, that we really 
because of your appreciation of all senses, yes. we were going to have to capture them all in a book. And at the time, we didn't know how to do that. And I remember bringing all of my daughter's little books, the scratch and sniffs and pet the puppy and and the, the just all of the different books we brought. And we went through and saw, you know, what what would work well for you and your ethos on life? And this book, dear friends, many of you have it. We not sold out yet, but it will happen eventually soon. This would have never happened without Teresa. And of course, Patrick, who played a key role with Teresa to, to make this great book come to fruition. But what is so exciting is Teresa is telling you, when she was younger, she was doing those little book mm -hmm. and creating them. This is exactly her process. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. I did bring it. I'll, I'll send you a photo of it. So It was fabulous. And she brought a little book, a mini version. And, you know, my big expression, as you know, is life is a theater. And we live life in different acts. And so Teresa had the brilliant idea to create each chapter being acts. Acts of life. Mm -hmm. Acts of senses. And this is how it came about. So... Why don't you walk us oh, yes. through some of the thoughts? Oh my goodness. So who, who loves leopard as much as Jean-Charles Boisset? So we worked with an incredible group um, in London, yeah. the design firm, um, that, you know, I think the thing with Design Lab, Design Laboratory, is that they think even farther out of the box. That's right. So I said, let's do leopard. They said, let's Please it. <laughs> and you may wonder, how did we find it? And I want to go back to what Teresa said, having a goal, an objective. Mm -hmm. How do you want to look like? Who do you want to be? What do you aspire to become? And some of you know, recently I did my psychotherapy with our very good friend Sabrina. And I was vulnerable and it's great to be because you really acknowledge yes. and you really define who you are. And it was very interesting because Teresa and I share the same love for book. There was one book we loved together yes. that was designed for Alexander McQueen. And that book was obviously made by those people. And then another book, The Fat Duck, the Fat Duck mm -hmm. out of the UK, one of the most illustrious restaurants in England. And the book was so fabulous. Oh. And it's my favorite cookbook or one of my favorites. And so Teresa reached out and here we got started with them. Yeah. So I think it's important, dear friends, in life in general, whether you're a writer, you go beyond. And, and Teresa, which I adored, understood so quickly that it's not just about the content, but the feel, the touch, and the senses. We want it to be excessive yes. in a sense that all the senses would appear from touch to sound to nose to taste and the overall, you know. Sight of it all. And I think too, you know, I knew that you entrusted me with your brand. And so it it took a lot of time to curate the right people for this. So, and I think that's another thing to, to really take at heart is sometimes you need to curate, you know, you need to make calls, you need to interview, you need to make sure that you, you choose the right people. And I think we had an incredible. That's right, the best team ever. Team. Yeah, so we hired an incredible designer, uh, Dan Danielle Mart Martinez, who did all of the illustrations for the book, and he was so available for us, and really worked with you know what your thoughts were and how you did want to capture each section. And the introduction is obviously the table of content, the eye, because I'm very visual, and I transcribe everything with the eye, and I need to see. I need to draw in order to finalize. It's the same when I craft wine. Yes. I'm very visual in a way that I need to see it. Yes. I cannot just imagine it as some people do with music or even artwork. And this is why the eye is essential. It is essential. And this comes to one of my favorite parts of the book, which is really one of the things that we wanted to capture was using the elements of wine in the book and so what we did was create an illustration that can only be read when you put a bottle of gala on, ah, ah. on. 
top of it. So you all need Gala to read the book. And if you've forgotten about the book and it's only on your coffee table, open it with Gala and you're going to be able to dream again. Yes, so fantastic. So... But all that was so fun, yes, wasn't it? Yes, and I loved... One of my favorite parts was, and this was your idea, was to put in recipes. Yeah. And, you know, it's pretty astounding to see a book of this caliber with recipes, but the recipes are of the caliber in which you live and the photos are phenomenal. And let's lift this up because this is just so insane. The photo shoot that day was the day of the total eclipse of the sun. That's right. And it was a pretty magical day. And I love the way that you art directed and added the jewelry to the dishes as well. So not only will you be able to drink the wine, but you can also taste That's the food. Right some of your favorite recipes. And I, for some of you who've come to our dinners, I think it's important to work, Teresa, on the presentation, on yes. the beauty and the style of the food. It's not just to be eaten, it's to be looked at, it's to be smelled. And why not decorating the plate as you decorate, you know, a house? Right. And, and I, maybe yes. you move things on the side or you eat in between it. I love it. But the table, the plate is a decoration, just like that beautiful outfit. Yes, and my beautiful decorations. Ooh la la. My Christmas Christmas, gifts. Christmas. Santa Jean-Charles came. This well, time. it's about time. <laughs> because we haven't seen Teresa in the wine country for way too long. Right? Oh my goodness. Well, with, with the COVID and all. So do you have a pendulum? It's I not. do. Oh my gosh. I do I have a we... pendulum. Oh. I think we're going to have and play with a pendulum and show everyone yes. how to discover who they are I, yes and one of the one of my one of the hardest pages but favorite pages was this one that you could only see in the dark so make sure you take your book put a lot of light on it and then go and hide in a dark dark place and see what it uncovers and teresa talking about the um, the writing explain to our friends how you succeed which is a great skill, dear friends, is to get into someone's mind, someone's skin, someone's experience. Because you write phenomenal articles, obviously you run a magazine, which is a huge work, with a lot of contributing writers, but you, what is the intellectual process to go through someone else's mind and transcribe it? Well, the first thing that I do is I stalk them. So I research the person every way possible. Once I do that, I'm able to come back with them with questions that are not answered through the usual social media. So enormous paths. research. Enormous amounts of research. And then that's when I uncover little things about them that maybe they forgot that they said in an interview. So especially with you, which is so wonderful that there's a plethora of information about you out there that I was able to read. I mean, I spent hours and hours and hours. I'm so sorry for that. I spent hours, but it was so fantastic to learn the intricacies of life. Mm -hmm. So then when I was able to sit down with you, I was able to ask you more questions about a specific topic that really got me interested like your biodynamic farming and your love for for the earth um, and the soil because most people don't really understand how passionate you are about yes. that but I really wanted to know it more. doesn't look like it <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm going to ask her questions dear friend this is what thanks to Teresa and to the process of the book, I actually redid for my own self. So I've used this tool, Ooh, which is called a pendulum, oh. all my life, from my grandmother all the way to today. This is a beautiful pendulum. That comes with the book. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and we designed to look like Christian Louboutin. That's it. And we basically, as you define energy, you define rhythm, you define direction, you can actually source for it, give it intentions, give it affirmations, confirmations, and be guided by the process of the pendulum. Yes. And the very cool part is, Teresa discovered that and she said, why don't you attach it to it? And my first reaction was, people are gonna think I'm crazy. Using a pendulum, using energy to really define who I am and she said maybe a lot more people do it than you think 
And she said, what is your chart you use? And I was actually using a chart in my mind derived from, the, from a few scale that many of you knew. So, you know, this is a yes, this is the no, this is the maybe plus and minus. So maybe with strong possibilities, maybe with maybe less possibilities. And Teresa asked me, you know, what do you love the most is elevation, hence the wings. What do you love the most? The bees within, you know, the environments. What do you love the most are people. For me, I strive thanks to the energy of people. I'm awake and enlightened when I'm with all of you. If I'm just alone, looking at myself in the mirror, it's a difficult time. One, I don't like always what I see. And number two, I want to be with you. And then she said, what is the key? You know, and how much time do you have? And how do you measure time? So in any case, the collaboration was amazing because it allowed me as well, you know, Teresa, to dive into my own self in a very different way. And very simply, you know, I'm going to play with it just right now for Teresa. Can I ask some question about Teresa? Yeah, I know it's a little, it's twisted, but it's okay. okay. We'll, we'll make it work. Okay. Yes. Does Teresa really want to date? <laughs> I'm going to have a... It's a maybe plus. I'm going to have a sip of... Yeah, you're going to have to finish that glass because we're going to go to Cabernet now. Maybe plus. Is it going to happen this year before the end of the year? Maybe plus but not no. really <laughs> is she gonna have to wait a few more months till the turn of the year yes is it gonna happen yes it's pretty clear i'm not moving my elbow and is this person watching with us tonight yes so if it happens tonight <laughs> and you actually meet the love of your life again tonight, I won't take any commission. I just want to be invited for the celebration. <laughs> so dear friends, those are the fun things we've done. Mm -hmm. So Teresa, give me the other glass because I'll serve you out of this. Oh, fantastic. As we have a few more minutes, oh. because we could speak endlessly about Endless. this. Endless. Endless. I think what would be very cool for you is to tell us what is the part you love the most in the book <laughs> that made you think, if there was one, that this is a signature of yours now that you've never participated ever. That was maybe the most insane, the most crazy, the most difficult. Okay, well, the senses are phenomenal. So um, how does that work? So you just take out a scent and scratch it and smell it. And what it will tell you is how that scent is manifested in your wines. And this is fun because a book is meant to be playful. Yes. You know, and for all of you, you should rename the definition of what you mean coffee table book by wine table book. I love book. that idea. Would you please? I mean, who needs coffee late in the evening? Right. Exactly. But that's a fun one yes. too. Yes, and I then agree. another one is I love the textures. This is something that um, Jean Charles and I had a little, you know, we disagreed about because I wanted them all black because I thought that if it was all black, then that would make you really have to feel it and think. But we came up with this solution. So this is a nice compromise on on textures. But my all time favorite is the Mad Lib Pentagon. Yes. This took me a while to figure out and you use the pendulum and you you can see it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and you write down what word the pendulum lands on in each section and then you write that word down and you turn the page and you fill in each of those words and you learn what your ideal and perfect wine is for yourself. So this is very cool because we meant to make it playful, interactive. Yes. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm going to show you oh, this. Oh, the wine label. Don't mm -hmm. forget that. And then you can take the wine label and go get your wines made. And we've had many of you who came. And now you have real wine, as much as I did this wine. Before we go to my favorite part of it, okay, let's have not only a toast, but a description. Ooh. 
So this is Napa Valley. This is that deep, Ooh, big red. Yes. And this is the holiday season. We're going to spend a lot of time at the fireplace. Yes, we are. On the couch with a few friends mm -hmm. in many ways, telling stories and redoing the world. Because isn't it fun in many ways, not what we've lived, but the outcome of it. How, as you describe the wine, tell us as well the outcome of what we've lived will help us figure out for the future. Oh my goodness. So the outcome of what we've lived for the future is that we are able to take all of those experiences and decide what parts we want to keep and what parts we don't want to keep. That's it's right. contrast. Very well said. And that, you cannot have art yeah. without contrast. And Ernest Hemingway says, you have to live life before you can write about life. And you have to be able to experience contrast before you can paint your mm. own incredible piece of artwork of your life. Wow. Powerful statement. I would agree with you very much. I feel in many ways there's a lot of positive of what we've lived. Incredibly. Yeah. And I do believe that this year has been a positive as well because we've been able to slow down and really take into account what's important to us. Yes. And where we want to move forward once the world starts to get back to normal. And do you know where you want to move forward? Yes, I do. Tell us. Well, if it's not too much of an indiscreet question. No. So I love travel. Yes. And I think the contrast of not being able to travel has really showed me how much I do love and appreciate travel. I love writing books. And I've been working on a science fiction book that you know, Patrick, I told Patrick about years ago, and I'm almost done with that. Wow. And so I'm in this new... Your own publishing. I'm not publishing it myself. No, no, but, but your own it, Teresa yeah. Rodriguez yes, will be yes. just you. Yes, and so I've been speaking with folks at Netflix about turning it into a series and mm. just, it's really, that's the creation, right? We're here wait. to create. And what I've done is taken all my experiences and put them into each character in the book. And there is a bit of Jean Charles in the book. Ooh, I cannot wait to see it. <laughs> so Teresa, tell us about this Ooh. Napa Valley Red Blend. Why do you feel, what do you sense? As I'm gonna look for my yes, favorite Yes, look page. for your favorite. Well, maybe there's oh, one. it's so cozy. It's just, I feel so cozy yes. with this. We gotta go back in the nest. Oh. You know, dear friends, when you come to the lounge, this is actually an egg. Because we all begin there, and we all eventually evolve from the egg to something else. Yes. So here, when I designed this, I wanted feathers on the eggs, and you saw Teresa was nested in the egg, mm -hmm. and she came out again as a new life. I did. Ooh, so I go. need to tell you my favorite question, Teresa, every dinner, we do. And dear friends, this is actually maybe opportune at the time of the holidays, the new year. You know, my question to people is always, you know, if it was your last supper, yes, who would you want to be with? What would you want to drink, of course? And if that, what type of wine and spirits and cordials and so forth? And what would be the menu? So we embarked on this journey wasn't it fun? So oh, what's your favorite so, of those? It, it was so exciting. And I want to share that Jean Charles really dived into the sea and the land and the river and the sky. I mean, I never thought of food that way. The three elements. The three elements. Or the he, five. Or the, the many, the many yeah. elements. And so my favorite was the stingray. Mm. The sea and that, that was inspiring. I never even thought about dining on stingray before that's right and which is a lot of fun is you will see not only my menu but you could obviously write yours and then we will open it quickly so you don't sit for too long this is my guest for my last supper you got the preview and I love opening the book and having people figure out who each of your guests are and then deciding why you invited them and then asking them who would you invite? And so who would you be yours? Well, you would obviously be there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Coco 
Coco and I'll promise I'll bring the wine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know that Coco Chanel would be there for sure. Yes. I would definitely want her there. I would have to think about Hemingway, it. Hemingway, probably. Hemingway, it would be writers, it would be P Dorothy Parker and F. Scott Fitzgerald. Yes. You would have to actually bring a lot of wine. Yes, we, <laughs> trust me, I'll bring half of the winery yes, with me. Yes. I think it would be writers. I really think it would be Maya Angelou. Yeah, it would be the the right. Oh, Charles Dickens. I can't. Yes. You know, it just. It. Oh, the Edith Wharton. Oh gosh, it would. I just the Bronte sisters. Oh gosh, I think I've just filled my table. So besides your books, Teresa, what do you recommend for anyone to read for the next few months? If you had, oh. if we were on Teresa's book club, what would be the three books you would say? At the edge of the fire, or wherever you are in the world, you should read those two or three books. I highly recommend. Oh my goodness! I besides the alchemy of yeah, the senses, the, yes, and the Lily Sammy. Sammy, of course, and the the other thirty books you've written. Right. Um, and we're going to give you a list, yeah, dear friends. Yeah, you know. So I read a lot of nonfiction. So yes, you know, Victor Frankel, uh, Man's Meaning. Yes. Is by far one of the best books. I'm gonna get and that. And I, 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 anytime I'm feeling, you know, sorry for myself, which yes. does happen occasionally. Well, but rarely, that's the Yeah, beauty so, of you it. know, I open it up and go, okay, this yes. is, uh, everything's okay. Because what he said is, you might not be able to control anything in your outer environment. Yes. You know, he was in Auschwitz when, this, when he narrates this book. But one thing that you control is your response to whatever that outward outside well environment said. is and so mm -hmm. anytime i might feel a little you know eh, i i remember that i control how i feel so that one mm -hmm. number oh, two goodness gracious i just finished f scott fitzgerald the beautiful and the damn oh <laughs> And that's not a recent book, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm reading. This is great, though. Why not recommending Fitzgerald? Yeah, you I know, mean, it's just. It there's not you, just a great Gatsby. Yes, and it takes you back to an eloquence, a, yes. a time when we appreciated the English language. That's right. And you know, getting lost in in New York during the twenties is just such a is just a fantastic. Era. Do we watch too much TV these days? I think that we do. I don't have um, True Confessions. We don't have a. A television or not we have a TV but it's hooked up to Apple TV only yeah um, we I we don't watch television in our house mm -hmm. um, so and then I'm listening to I'm listening because uh, I drive a lot to Simon Rushdie's um, satanic verses mm. which is in, so far as far as I'm into this book it's a, it's absolutely fantastic. and it's a book I had the pleasure to read a man who risked his life yes to write about the true meaning of what he's experienced, and I'll let you discover. Yes. But uh, what what a book. Yes, I mean, talk about putting a bounty on. You know, he yeah. had a bounty on his head, and he had to. Yeah. So I just love. I have to admit, I love the old oldies but goodies. Yeah, I'm with you. So, uh, Teresa, what is your dream? As we're drinking, drinking the alchemy of dreams, and and dreaming the alchemy of dreams that you haven't yet achieved that you're willing to share, of course. Well, that would be the science fiction book. Okay. Um, I would love for it to really change lives because in the book I really, I touch on subjects that are a bit taboo mm -hmm. and I wrap them around science fiction so people can learn about them through the lens of science fiction. But the issues are still very real, which is mental illness, yes. suicide, people's worth, uh, this disparity between the poor and the rich. Yes. Um, so I really cover those in the book, but I try to wrap them around. You know, it's it's Barbarella, but currently there's a I lot of wait. there's a lot of scenes that you'll enjoy where people don't have any clothes on, but there's also a <laughs> lot of science, and that's the reason why. The why do you think I will enjoy a scene with people no clothes on? <laughs> because you love wine. <laughs> <laughs> um, it takes place at the. Um, Berkeley Lawrence Lab yes. at um, the Particle Accelerator is where yeah, the book starts, sure. and wow. so it's all about molecular science and digging deep into what the possibilities. Of I life cannot are. wait. Yes. So yeah, it's really it's really fun. It's fun. So, to write. but your dream is coming to life. It it's is. Gonna happen. So it's almost it's, finished. It's yes, yeah, so it's almost done, and then I want it to be a series where people, you know, watch each one and say, "Wow, I learned a lesson from that. I learned about X, Y, Z, whatever it might." This it is might great. Be. So, yeah. I'm, I'm with Teresa. For me, it's hard to read 
a book just to escape I need to learn something yes. along the way and that's how I am too yes. you know there's always has to be a verb attached to that's it to the reading to the, the act what amazing time so Teresa and I had those moments for hours and almost days non-stop talking and enjoying bottles of wine with great friends of ourselves and having a lot of fun you know crafting the alchemy of the senses and many other things so Teresa I have a big question for yes. you now sadly we have to let our friends go for dinner or do whatever they do at this time of the night what would be your message at the edge of 2020 2021 to everybody with us to the world in general Teresa Rodriguez mm. message to the world the message to the world I think you need to look the at all the message to the world <laughs> is possibilities yes this next year and the years to come are all about possibilities and just like we can as Jean Charles can take a grape and turn it and turn it into a beautiful glass of wine thank you you too can take your thoughts and your ideas and turn them into your next big dream I love it so to the irresistible charismatic fabulous spontaneous and so talented Teresa Rodriguez dear friends we wish you happy holidays and I'm not gonna share one more time I need a kiss <laughs> have fun have fun